We're now with Information Technology Service, and uh, Councilman Pridemore is still with us. And I should begin by saying Metro 3 is fantastic. Thank you. We agree with you. And uh, they're doing a great job. Good to have them here. Um, Keith, if you could introduce yourself, your colleagues, and then make whatever uh, presentation you'd like to make. I'll do it. Thank you, Mayor. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time and for your consideration of our operating budget for this year. With me, I've got Information Technology Services leadership team, uh, Margaret Keck, our Assistant Director over Communications and Infrastructure Services, Greg Nicholson, our ITS Finance Manager, and other man members of our management team are in the back, Don Clark, Kelly Campbell, Cindy Maddox and John Griffey. And then I do want to recognize by name the individual Metro 3 staff members who are working this production today. Uh, first off, PEG TV manager Mary Newton. We have Chris Singleton, David Haney, David Harbsmeyer, and Terry Hirsch. So thank you guys you for what you're doing. Come out here and take a bow. Yeah. <laughs> when do we, 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 we get them in front of the camera? That's what I want. Mm -hmm. Keith, can we get your, you to run the cameras and let them get them up here? We can give that a shot. Maybe next year. Okay, maybe so. we won't be here, Keith. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'd like to begin first by thanking you and your administration for the leadership you have shown and for truly taking Nashville to new heights. ITS is truly grateful uh, to have been a part of that progress through the work we do supporting your administration and the departments of Metro Government. And on a personal basis, I also want to thank you for allowing me to lead ITS for the last six years and to develop a team that provides exceptional customer service and of which I'm very proud. Information Technology Services is a department that exists to serve and support the technology needs of other Metro departments and agencies. At some level, we provide support for all of the agencies of the general government and the judicial branch and other aspects of the Metro government, including the Hospital Authority, MTA, MNPS, and NES. We strive to do so in a very collaborative environment, working towards solutions that will maximize the return on the IT investment for our taxpayers. Our core business model is to provide the common infrastructure and IT services so that our customers' departmental staff can focus on activities that provide direct impact for their business objectives. Services we provide include managing Metro's data network, email, servers, telephones, and PC support, as well as providing systems that are essential to operations across multiple departments, such as Metro's land management and permitting system, Metro's financial and HR system, which is called EBS, and our Nashville.gov website. In addition, we also pride ourselves on partnering with departments to provide progressive new products and that create value for customers and our citizens, such as Metro's open data portal. A few of our proud accomplishments and ongoing major long-term initiatives that we've either completed in the last year or will complete very soon include providing the data and network telephone design and implementation for over 30 metro construction projects including the new Lentz Public Health Building, the Bellevue and Southeast Libraries, the Midtown Hills Police Precinct, several renovated fire halls, parks facilities, and water services facilities. We've also, under your leadership, completed the first major phase of the Metro Public Wi-Fi project, providing free internet Wi-Fi to over 70 locations, including this courthouse, the Fulton campus, county clerk sites, all libraries, all parks community centers, and many other locations around Metro. However, we are certainly not resting on our past accomplishments. To prepare for the budget process this year, ITS worked with a wide range of stakeholders, from our customers and staff to vendor partners and peers in other cities, to look at the future of information technology within Metro that cover 35 separate product lines that we offer to our customers. These roadmaps used in planning our budget submission will be released in whole in May as a part of our updated three-year strategic plan for ITS. And with that information used to inform our budget creation process, along with our existing portfolio of projects and services, 
it's my responsibility to report that ITS is not in a position to meet our requested 3% reduction scenario without significant impact to our operations as they exist now and potentially to the services stakeholders across Metro expect from us. And to drill into that a bit, of the $455,000 requested as our 3% reduction scenario, just over $300,000 submitted is for theoretically optional services that provide critical vendor support for our network, telephone systems, and server backups in times of major issues. While we do have strong systems in place, these support agreements are insurance policies at some level. The other services submitted as part of the reduction provides Metro employees web content filtering. This filter could be done using an open source tool at a lower cost. However, departments would lose some features that they appreciate and, and use extensively. Now moving beyond that 3% reduction scenario, I'd like to take the opportunity to discuss briefly our request for $3 million in expense improvements to, to support some very specific initiatives. ITS exists in a metro government environment where operating funding has not kept up with the needs and the demand for infrastructure, security, and systems. While it's obvious that many of Metro's buildings are new and renovated, what is not so obvious is that with each new or upgraded facility or service a department rolls out, the overarching IT support requirements for those facilities and others become more intensive. Metro's network becomes more complicated, the number of devices supported is larger, security measures are greater, and requirements from departments looking for technology solutions to their own reduced operating funds is edging ITS toward a breaking point that none of us is eager to see. ITS is no longer just about computers, but also phones, cell phones, tablets in inspectors' hands on job sites, thermostats in metro's buildings, video cameras in parks, and ambulances, police cars, and fire trucks rolling on the streets. To name, to begin a list of where technology is impacting the daily lives of metro employees. This change is not going to slow down anytime in the near future. So speaking specifically then to this increase request, by far the largest components of that increase come from the annual increases in contracted licensing and support for systems and hardware that ITS already has in place and that support in metro departments and agencies. Just over $2 million will go to support non-discretionary increases for metro-wide firewalls, networking equipment, Nashville.gov, EBS, and other critical functions. This list encompasses items Metro has already agreed to in prior contracts for services already in use Metro-wide. The other big component of the improvement request is staffing. Adjusting for the addition of the EBS staff that came to ITS from finance several years ago, ITS is currently three positions below where we were in fiscal 2008. After years of careful selection and process changes, today's ITS employees are highly competent professionals, more responsive to our customers, and are more engaged and dedicated to the work they do while being better, faster, and stronger has meant a great deal in compensating for lack of staff, we are still in a position where I'm requesting an improvement of eight and a half new ITS staff positions. These positions fall into three categories. The first category helps match our staffing level to the level of support required for existing, long-established infrastructure services to ensure that these services are as available, reliable, and secure as we can make them. Thus, we're requesting an improvement for one and a half network staff members with the half to replace the half that we gave up from an unfilled position several years ago to meet a budget scenario. Next, we are requesting one technical project position, technical project manager position, to replace several contract project managers that will roll off from ITS pay at the end of their capital funded projects. 
Next, we request one position to manage the two-year-old physical security service lines around card key access and video cameras, both of which are new services that are expanding rapidly within many metro agencies. The last of these infrastructure positions is a SharePoint administrator position to lead and manage that existing product line used by every one of the large metro departments, but which is outdated and brittle. So the next two positions requested are ones that go beyond managing what we have today and maintenance to actively pushing for, toward additional creation of value for departments. First, we'd like to institutionalize as much as possible prior to the next administration your open data initiative by bringing on an employee to manage and shepherd that important initiative for the next year. The other role is more inward facing, an HR associate to work with our very specific staffing needs from a technical recruiting perspective and to explore expanded minority participation in our hiring process. The final category, we'd like to request funding for two new field services technicians requested of us by the police department, which will enable ITS to support not only the police, but other round the clock service agencies, such as the fire department and water services, to support their PCs and laptops in their facilities and vehicles. To wrap up, as always, we will support departments and agencies to the best of our abilities and in line with your funding decisions. Once again, thank you for the support you and your administration have shown us and for enabling ITS to serve and support Metro departments and agencies per our mission. Thank you. And you've, in terms of your uh, request for improvements, um, they're ranked starting with, um, I guess, number eight in order of priority? That is correct. Until you go over to the... Um, the contractual positions, yeah. the, the, the 19, which are the start start the um, contractual increases, yeah. which are um, obligatory. That is correct. Okay. Can you um, talk a little bit about how the uh, open data initiative has gone and where we are right now? Sure. That's been a. Uh, 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 a great collaborative effort amongst a number of organizations, specifically your office, ITS, finance, and planning have been in the central development of that, but it's really been an effort that, that requires all of the departments and agencies who've submitted data to it. Um, what it's done for us, it, uh, it really appeals to those who are looking for transparency in government. It gives them that feeling and that understanding of the data that we have in the government. Secondly, it offers within departments and agencies um, an awareness of what data exists already within the government that they don't have to go out and buy or somehow procure. There is a working initiative right now that's a collaboration that's pending between the police department and MNPS on truancy data and overlapping data sets that the two have that have never come together in the past. And finally, this gives those who are technically minded out there uh, the ability to put together analyses and applications or web apps or, or mobile phone apps that either um, Metro wouldn't prioritize or wouldn't have funding to prioritize or wouldn't even have thought of. So it's going to bring additional value to us like it, like it has in other places. Okay. Rich? Um. Just curious, when you when you look at the um, the, on the contractual increases, mm -hmm. how are those determined? I mean, is that I'm sure it's by contract, so it speaks for itself. But uh, there's no discretion in those numbers, or how how do you arrive at that number? Do you negotiate that with the uh, vendor? So th those we go through each of our contractual obligations as a matter of course during every budget cycle. Those figures are ones that we have pulled from the contract documents themselves, and so we have not specifically at this point gone back to say, Oracle, Microsoft, would you be willing to cut us a break on these things? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Possibility that they'll do that? 
Yeah. Depending upon the vendor, and there and may be and possibilities. And future opportunities there may be and all that. Yeah. That is okay. correct. Got it. Okay. That's all. All right. Keith, tell me a little bit more about this HR position, this recruiting position, and how you how you see that from where you sit and what you, what you would hope to get from that. So we have an HR manager who is Cindy Maddox in the room who came from 19 years with the city uh, county county of Riverside, California. She knows what we need in a market where technology people are, um, are a precious resource. She also is very used to dealing with a, a diverse population. And so one of the problems that we have and we acknowledge is that ITS is not as diverse as we want to be. And so Cindy already has plans to work on outreach to various types of organizations in the city. It's just a limitation on her being that single point of the ability to do that today while she's also managing the internal engagement program all the HR mm -hmm. activities all those standard things that an HR person does we feel that it makes sense for her and our organization to do that because of the specific needs that we have uh, around technology employees okay and how do you um you know, we, I spend a lot of time hearing about and talking about the need for tech workers in Nashville, broadly speaking, in Middle Tennessee, broadly speaking. Mm -hmm. How is that, and I guess I hear all the time that there are any given time, there are like 800 positions available. Correct. How, how has that affected your ability to hire? It's dramatically affected our ability to hire. If you just look at our number of open positions, at any one time over the course of the past three years, we've had between 16 and 20 open positions at any one time. Today, the number of those positions that we have filled, because they're hard to fill, are, I think it's number nine, nine of those positions are filled with contractors because the positions are too rare in this arena or the, the people are just too expensive to bring on as a full-time Metro employee. That, that's how we deal with it. We're also moving into, and we have been, building our own staff by training internally. Uh, we've got an internship program that we've been working on, but it's also bringing people that have potential internally, finding the right people and plugging them into positions where we do have uh, growth opportunities. The networking arena in Margaret's space is an area where we've done that successfully a couple of times within the past year, actually. All right. Well, thank you. I, we'll um, do our best, and I appreciate all your hard work and another successful year, and, and thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.